In this series of four videos, I'm going to walk through the addition of audio to an Edge Animate composition. Animate, at the moment, has no audio management feature, which means you're going to have to write the code. I'm going to show you two ways of doing it, one that is a pure HTML5 approach, and the other will use the Buzz.js library. I'm also going to do something a bit different. Rather than focus on a specific technique, I'm also going to walk you through my asset creation and my workflow in creating this project. This means there will be stops at Audition, Edge Animate, Web Fonts, and Edge Code. And we start in Animate. I'm going to switch over to a different document here. I am a huge jazz fan, and one of my favorite artists is Miles Davis. His album, Bitches Brew, kicked off the jazz fusion movement, and my favorite track on the album is Miles Runs the Voodoo Down, which got me thinking, what can I do with that title? And the plan is to animate those words over an image of Miles that I found on Google Images. And here's the image that I found, and I opened it up in Fireworks took out the background and smoothed out some of the edges and saved it out as a PNG file. In researching the album, I also discovered the font used on the actual cover was Novel Gothic, which has somehow faded into the mists of typographic history, but at least I had a starting point with the word Gothic. So I'm going to pop back over to Animate. And I first opened a new Animate document and set the stage size to 450 by 400. And I wasn't quite thrilled with the solid backgrounds, so I decided on a blue to white gradient, which was featured on the album cover. So my first step was to select the rectangle tool and draw it a rectangle matching the dimensions of the stage. I then applied a gradient fill to the rectangle by clicking in the color properties, clicking on the gradient, and when the gradient properties opened, I selected a linear gradient, and I'm going to use it to fill using the RGBA color space. The color that I wanted to go was blue to white, sort of matching the gradient in that album cover. So the blue was set to 85, 139, 187, and I kept the alpha value, which is the A, to 100%. Now I defaulted to white here, which is exactly what I wanted, and I now have my gradient. Now obviously it's in the wrong place, so I'm just going to drag it down under the Miles image. There we go. Now the Miles image is obviously large. If you select it, you can see that it just bleeds right off the stage. I decided to clip the image with the clipping tool rather than letting the overflow property right up in here handle the trimming duties. So I select the clipping tool right here, and then I just move the edges in. So I've got a tightly cropped image sitting on the stage. My next stop was font choice. Now I'm going to turn on the, uh, the words here. Obviously I couldn't use the original face, so I popped over to Edge Web Fonts. Now to do that, what you do is you just select a piece of text or whatever text you've entered. And I'm just going to twirl up some of these properties here because it's a little bit much. And clicked on the plus sign here to take me over to the Edge Web Fonts. And I'm looking for a Gothic face. So let's see what they got that's Gothic. And Didact and League Gothic were my choices. I went with uh, League Gothic because I wanted the words to be rather large and rather strong. And you, that's a pretty strong face right there. So I just clicked Add Font. And then just with the shift key held down, selected the rest of the words and applied League Gothic to them. I've got my elements in place, so what I want to do now is just go over to the final version of this file and just show you how 
I pulled everything together. So I'm going to go over to Voodoo HTML. And you can see that what I did was using League Gothic, I set up each of the words to be different sizes. And because the layers feature of animate allows me to sort of give a parallax effect, I could have the words overlap each other. Now the choice of color was rather simple. I'm just going to pop back to the original here because I want to show you something. I'm just going to grab the clipping tool and I'm just going to pull this down just a bit. Now I loved the orange in Miles' pants, so I decided to use it for four of the words. Miles runs the and down. And then I picked up this blue here and used it for the word voodoo. Now my intention all along was to use a clip from the start of the track. And the start of Miles Runs the Voodoo Down is a rather slow. This meant the animations could take their time. After a bit of playing around, I decided that four seconds was just about right for each animation. And then I applied a cubic ease out to each each of the animations. Miles bothered me because the image just seemed to sit there. So I selected the image and applied a blur animation over 10 seconds to bring the image into focus and then decided to blow out the color and have the image turn into a sepia tone as the blur reduces in value. After staggering the animations on the timeline and adjusting the duration to the changes in the Miles image, the final piece of the puzzle became clear. I needed 24 seconds of audio. I also wanted to just see if everything worked the way I expected it to, so what I'm going to do is just move this down a little bit here and center the animation in the screen. And let's press the spacebar and see how this works. So there's this very slow fade in of miles, and then the words start to slowly come in and ease into place. This worked for me, and the next step in the process, of course, was to get that 24-second audio clip. I'll cover off how I created it in the next video. I'll see you there.